The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and with one voice. Today is March the 30th and I wish you all a very good beginning to the new week. This weekend I've walked the dog and walked the dog, conducted worship and walked the dog. And yesterday we live streamed the service. The rules are now that there can only be two people in the building, so that was yet another first. The coronavirus is getting closer and as I now know several people in the parish and the congregation who are living with the illness. So let us pray for all those who are living with illness and the coronavirus and let us remember their families and all the people who support them through this difficult time. A lesson for this morning. They were bringing children to him that he might touch them and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant. But And he said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands upon them. This is a passage which is very um, personal to me for various reasons. Some of you will know that I served as convener of the Safeguarding Committee of the Church of Scotland for over five years. Originally it was called the Child Protection Unit but as time has gone on and practice has developed, safeguarding encapsulates everyone who might be at risk from harm and abuse, adult and child. During my time on safeguarding I had heard many stories that would make your blood run cold and I felt that safeguarding needed a patron saint whose example showed what we are all about in the Church of Scotland, keeping the most vulnerable safe. And one day I read about a saint who was called Saint Dymphna. Now I'm sure most of you will not have heard about Saint, Dif saint Dymphna. So here's a little bit about her. She was born in the 7th century in Ireland. She was an Irish princess. Her father was called Damon. We don't know the name of her mother, but when she was 14, her mother died and she was grief stricken. As time went on, her father was told by his advisor that it would be good and healthy for him to remarry. And he told his advisors that he would only remarry somebody as beautiful and as faithful as Dymphna's mother. And they looked around the whole kingdom to find another as beautiful as his first wife. But no one could match up to her beauty and commitment and faith. Except one person. That person was Dymphna. And she was told by the advisors that she was to marry her father. And so appalled by this she and her confessor priest ran away. They ran away all the way to Belgium to a little town called Giel, which in the seventh century was nothing more than a hamlet. There she used her knowledge, her wisdom, her faith, and she built a hospice for the most vulnerable and the most ill in the area. But her fame and her success became such that people from all over the area and eventually Belgium were bringing their sick, particularly those who were psychologically ill, to Giel to be cared for by Dymphna and her community. And the fame became abroad and it wound its way back to her father, Damon who came to Giel and demanded that she return to Ireland and marry him. And when she refused, she was decapitated by her father. 
a church was built in her memory and over the years pilgrims from all over Europe came seeking treatment for ill health and mental health issues and it got to the point where they were so successful that people from the town started to take people into their homes and so a tradition began in Giel in Belgium where people would take people into their homes they weren't called patients they were called boarders and they would live with the townsfolk and they would work and live and stay for a few days or a few weeks or months or sometimes years or even their whole lives and the place called Giel would protect these most vulnerable of people. Some, and at its peak in the 1930s, so 1200 years later, there were over 4,000 boarders who lived in Giel. St Dymphna is the patron saint of young runaways, of the nervous, of the emotionally disturbed, the mentally ill, those who suffer from neurological disorders. And as a result, she's also the patron saint of psychologists, psychiatrists and neurologists. She's the patron saint of survivors of incest and sexual abuse. Her story touched me when I first heard it and it still affects me still. The church has a responsibility to care for the most vulnerable in our midst and to ensure that everyone has a safe place in our congregations and at the table of Jesus Christ. And so it is our commitment to care for the least, the last and the lost and to do so with joy in our hearts. An Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine soft upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Have a good day.